Welcome to the British Museum. Today we'll be looking at a number of the exhibits and seeing what they have to say about the Bible. We'll be looking at historical artifacts that mention the names of places, of kings, of battles and even empires, all of which are referenced in scripture. And to help us on this journey of discovery, we will be joined to find out the significance historically and biblically of these exhibits by an expert and co-author of the book through the British Museum with the Bible, Clive Anderson. Clive, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure and it's going to be my delight to show you around. is a fascinating sculpture. I don't know what it's all about, but let's find Clive and get him to tell us. These are called Lamassus. They are protective spirits which were placed at the entrance of cities and also temples. The idea being that the open eyes, so closed circuit television is nothing new, is assessing you if you are evil they will kick the evil away, so they have to be perfect. That's why they've got two legs at the front, four at the side, five in perspective. And Ashurbanipal, the last great king of Assyria, tells us that his grandfather, Sennacherib, was killed between two bulls like this. So for him, the evil wasn't kicked away. 2 Kings 19 And it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch his god, that Adramelech and Sharazar, his sons, smote him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Armenia. We've just been talking about Sennacherib, and we've now come to the Lachish room. This is very interesting because in 701 BC, we find that Sennacherib came up against Judah. He didn't capture Jerusalem. If he had, humanly speaking, the Messiah could never have been born. But he did capture a very important city, Lachish. We're going to join Clive now and he's going to take us through the reliefs to show the story of that battle. When these reliefs were first discovered in 1847, they were worldwide news because they were the first external corroboration archaeologically of a biblical event. We see the Assyrians setting up the siege with their bows and arrows, but significantly with the slingshot. And they've actually found some of the missiles at Lachish, and they're here in the cabinet. And you can see they're between the size of a snooker and a tennis ball, and that is the size of missile that David used to kill Goliath. We also have another record here of Sennacherib's, another foundation document, which speaks not only of Lachish, but also the siege of Jerusalem. So we have more than one record of this fantastic event. So Clive, what do we have here depicted in this relief? This was absolutely unique. It was the first time a siege had been discovered that had been depicted in relief. We see that the Assyrians have built a siege ramp between 14 to 16,000 tonnes of rubble, and up it is going this marvellous uh, siege engine. There are three people in it. We can't see the one who's trying to steer it up, a man with his bow and arrow, and the incredible fellow looking the wrong way with a great ladle of water to put out the flaming torches that are coming down to try and set it on fire. They also discovered at Lachish 
two chains with like great fish hooks on them where they try to catch it and flip it up. And this is a cartoon, you have to think uh, cartoon because the, uh, the chaos of war, so you see the mayhem of war but refugees coming out. At the bottom here we have a very sad scene where people being impaled. This is the forerunner of crucifixion. This is how Moses would have been executed if the Egyptians had caught him. Uh, this is how Haman wanted to put Mordecai to death. Moses refers to it as cursed is anyone who is hanged on a tree and in Acts chapter 10 Peter at the house of Cornelius doesn't say Jesus was crucified but that he was hanged on a tree linking back to this horrendous way of dying. We've, we've moved along here Clive. What does this part of the relief show? This is truly hideous. The two main leaders of Lachish have been staked out on the ground and they're being flayed, that is skinned alive. And their skins will then be taken and put on what remains of the city gate as a warning to all not to rebel. Also what I think is really gruesome is that they've got two children, I hope they're not re related, looking on. If Sennacherib had got into Jerusalem, in all probability, this would have been Hezekiah and Isaiah. So when Isaiah says, trust in God, he will save you, he literally took his skin in his hands. This relief is so detailed. What do we have here, Clive? Here we see the king himself, Sennacherib, sat on his ivory-clad throne with his feet on his footstool. His enemies would have been depicted on them. And that is the background to Psalm 110, verse 1, that Jesus shall reign until all his enemies become his footstool. We also uh, note that in his hand he has an arrow and a bow. The arrow is pointing down, the bow is reversed, meaning he's going to show clemency to those ones. They will not be killed. Sennacherib was a modest man. He calls himself in the inscription there, King of the Universe. Sennacherib, supreme king, king of Assyria, sits upon a throne while the booty of Lachish passes before him. Um, but we can see what other people thought of him when Nineveh fell in August 612 BC. We think it was a Babylonian soldier that defaced him because they believed if you take away someone's face, you take away their identity and their ability to live in the afterlife. So this is the last part of the relief we're going to look at, Clive. What do we see here? We see the Assyrians rewriting history. We know that Sennacherib brought 305,000 people in his army. And the Bible tells us that the angel of the Lord put to death 186,000 of them. Many people think it's at Jerusalem, but the Bible actually tells us it's the Assyrian camp. And here's the Assyrian camp depicted, and you won't see a single dead body. It's as though Sennacherib is saying, believe me, and not the Bible. 2 Kings 18. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, the Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. Three years they took it. Samaria was taken. And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria and put them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant. Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the kings of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I have offended. Return from me. That which thou puttest on me will I bear. King of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Two Kings 18. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house. We were talking just now about Sennacherib, and this, fascinatingly, is his own story in stone. Tell us about it, Clive. The ancient Assyrians um, used to bury at temples foundation records, 
and this is Sennacherib's one of almost this complete reign starting in 705 BC. What is significant for us is that he actually mentions coming against Judah and in his own words he shut up Hezekiah like a bird in a cage. <laughs> and uh, what is interesting is that according to the Bible of course he was not able to get into that cage um, but he doesn't say why he couldn't and he went back and he, it also lists all the places that are mentioned in 2 Kings, 2 Chronicles and Isaiah as well. So we're incredibly fortunate to have both the Hebrew version and the Assyrian version of the invasion of 701. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city, to save it, for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass that night, that the angel of the Lord went out. And smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. And so again, this historical artefact actually proves the records that we have in Scripture. Very much so. And also, it also shows that biblical prophecy is fulfilled because um, Isaiah had prophesied that Israel would be taken away and they were taken away by the Assyrians and Jeremiah prophesied that Judah eventually would be and the language that we have here, the, the script, the Akkadian script is Paul's, the Apostle Paul's example of speaking in tongues in 1 Corinthians 14, where he actually mentions that these things will happen, and they did. Yeah, ab ab absolutely fascinating. Anybody wanting to just understand the scripture and to know it's true can actually come here and see this. Yes, and they can also download it off the British Museum website and read the text, so you can see how it matches up with these scriptures. Clive. It's been fascinating. Thank you so much. And if folks want to find out more, I think you've got the book available. Yes, here it is. It's they sell it here in the museum, or you can get it from Day One Publications Direct. Thank you very much indeed, Clive. And thank you for watching. And from Doug Harris, it's goodbye.